Okay, welcome to the meetup, AAA Astrophotography meetup for October 30th, 2017. And we'll talk about image processing uh, tonight, processing of the, of the night sky pictures. Uh, we, do we have any announcements or anything? I don't think we have any really announcements. Well, uh, Al Alfredo is interested in doing a uh, demonstration of, I think, some of the deep sky imaging that he does out in the field. Uh, so we talked about a couple of locations, and on November 11th, which is a Saturday, I'm taking a, the intro to night sky photography class that's meeting now out to Jenny Jump for, uh, for the final field trip. So uh, uh, I'll be out there with the class, and uh, I, Alfredo thought it would be a good place to, to go as well, so we'll, we can organize uh, carpools and all that stuff through the, um, the Google group email. Uh, and the, the Jenny Jump people know that we're coming out there. there, there there's a few people that want to join us, so uh, it should be a pretty nice night. It's not the public, the public programs ended at the end of October, so uh, we'll be out there basically uh, by ourselves. So, so that'll be nice. And uh, bring out whatever equipment you want to bring out, and we could do all sorts of uh, demonstrations or and and just shooting of, of what what what's up in the sky. What date again? November 11th, which is a Saturday. Uh, and then the, this, I think the, I'm going out with the class kind of early because the, the, I think the sun sets around 445 on that day. So I wanted to be out when it's still a little bit light. And I, uh, I guess everybody can organize and come out whenever, whenever you want. You can come out earlier if you want. Um, there's a great place in the town to have dinner. Uh, the, the Mil, I think Millbrook Inn is I think what it's called. And it's, uh, if you wanted to do that before you, you head out. And I, I'm not sure how late we'll be there, but it, it just depends on how late the UACNJ people want to stay. But usually, if it's clear, there'll be a, a few people out there observing, and they'll, they'll want to stay late too. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about just the image processes in general, and also the uh, the workflow. Uh, th there's a workflow that I use. Every photographer is totally different, and I mean the the, the workflow that you have is a lot different than than what what I use, and so I think. Uh, the, some of the programs might be uh, unfamiliar or new to you, uh, but uh, generally whatever works just in terms of browsing. Uh, I use a, a program called Photo Mechanic uh, by a company called Camera Bits, and it's specifically just for browsing and editing, selecting uh, pictures. Uh, and it's, it's really, it's great because it's real fast and it's powerful and it links directly to Photoshop. So. A lot of news photographers use it because it's a it's a really fast way to download images to your computer, uh, look through look through them, uh, select whatever ones you want, and then send it straight to Photoshop, where you where you just do basically could do a few things on it and then save them. Uh, I'll also be talking about uh, mainly Photoshop. If you're using Lightroom through the Adobe CC package of of uh, processing programs. You, you have Photoshop. You're already paying for it. Uh, and so you could easily make a, make a transition to that. I know people uh, sometimes are a little bit afraid they fo be fo thinking Photoshop is a little complicated, but it, but it really isn't. I, I only use a few of the uh, uh, adjustment tools on it. I, I don't really use a whole lot because uh, uh, we, we couldn't. When, we, when I was doing photojournalism, we, we couldn't do a whole lot on the picture anyway. And as it turns out, if you've got a really good exposure in the camera, you don't really have to do a whole lot, um, use a whole lot of tools itself in the in the program it, itself. The um, the one thing I'll point out is uh, uh, in Windows, the uh, the control key is also the is the command key in in Mac. Is that right? That's right. Uh, and the Alt key is the Option key. So. Uh, I'll sort of I'll try to say both when I when I talk about using one of those keys, but uh, in case I don't, that's uh, that's sort of the trans translation I'll do. So uh, I'll uh, I'll do make a Google Drive and I'll post this uh, uh, this work workflow uh, checklist that I that I've made up, and then we'll we'll figure out where we could also post the uh, the video of this uh, tutorial. So I'll uh, I'll start by. Uh, I, I generally download the, the memory card uh, just straight into my computer, onto the computer hard drive, through uh, Photo Mechanic. And uh, once, I, once I do that, um, I'll, sometimes I look through the pictures first. Uh, at, at some point, I'll rename the folder uh, with the date and the subject matter. 
and then I'll make a backup right away. I'll, I'll copy the folder onto at least one external hard drive. I, I, I have two external hard drives for uh, that, that I copy each folder onto, so I'll have, a, I'll have two copies of them. And then I only work on the files uh, that are on my computer hard drive. So then I, I leave the files on the external hard drive alone, and so they're, uh, they're essentially, I could go back to them, recopy them onto my hard drive if I need to, and they're in the same condition they were when they uh, were downloaded from the camera. So I'll, uh, this is what photo mechanic looks like. Uh, you, you get this uh, uh, contact sheet of, of images. You could you, you can make them you can make them smaller or make them bigger. Uh, it's it's pretty nice because you could um, these are this is just a selection right here. If if you've got uh, uh, say 80 100 pictures on your disk or, or more, you can go through them and you can make little check marks in this in the boxes down here. And then you could just look at the ones that you've checked. So it makes it, uh, makes it a lot easier. If you've only checked 10 pictures, then you could just look at those 10 and not have to worry about the other ones if, if they're out of focus or if they're blurry or, or something like that. Uh, there's, there's a few ways that you can actually view it. Uh, one way is, is a, basically a full, almost a full screen. And then you could, uh, you could just scroll through the pictures and look, look through them that, this way. Uh, there's a second version where you, you get a, a strip of all the pictures in in the f particular folder that you're uh, that you have. You get the main the, the highlighted picture here in the center, and then you get a lot of the information that's recorded in the camera on the on the right side here. I, I look back to this information a lot. Um, the date and the time. Uh, as long as the time is correct in your camera, oftentimes I go to a place and I forget to set the time zone, and so I'm in the wrong time zone on the camera for for a couple of days, but then I'll, then I'll change it back. Uh, the, uh, it'll record the lens, the ISO, the aperture, and the shutter speed. So I go back to that and look to see what the settings were in my camera if I need to compare this with, a, with another shot or if I have to, uh, if people are, sometimes people are interested in actual the, the numbers of the camera setting. You have uh, the capacity to see at what temperature the image was recorded with Nikon? Yeah, the, the question was, do you have the cap capacity to see what temperature it was recorded at? And, and no, I, there might be uh, some external device that will record it, but the, 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 the camera by itself doesn't record the, the temperature. Yeah, that, that actually would probably be helpful with things like dark slides, um, yeah, dark frames, is because the dark frames are, are uh, temperature sensitive, so you, you would need them. Uh, there's, there's people who will they'll record a whole bunch of dark slides at different temperatures and then save those for... And then, and then that, that saves them. So, but you have to be at the exact temperature to to have to have them useful for the whatever you're shooting uh, th that particular night. And uh, the uh, a, a, a interesting thing is you could go in, you could zoom at, at different um, magnifications. So I could I could zoom into a picture. I could see was is, is it actually sharp or the stars sharp? Uh, what about the foreground? Uh, and and then. Um, then I could go to uh, just browsing through in a in a in a big way. The um, the terms that I'll be using tonight, uh, I, when when photographers talk, we we uh, th when we say editing, usually it means that we're browsing through the the folder and making selections of of the pictures, and then the processing part is actually in Photoshop. Um, I know that the terms kind of get mixed around a lot. Uh, uh, people use editing when they're talking about Photoshop, but I'll use when I when I edit pictures. It's in my mind. I'm looking through the folder here, selecting what I want to actually look at, what I want to process, and then I put that into Photoshop, and and process it. The um, the the good thing about uh, Photo Mechanic is that you could you could set it up so it'll choose a program that it will uh, open up, and you could do your editing processing in uh, uh, with with one keystroke. Um, I, I I just hit the um, uh, the E key, and it goes it goes straight into uh, Photoshop, or at least it should. Here it goes. And uh, what I, I have it set up, I have the preferences set up so that um, on there's something called launching, and so I could this is assign a default application, and I have Photoshop set up as the default application, and and then. Um, this is when in RAW plus JPEG mode, editing a photo, uh, I selected edit the RAW photo. Uh, sometimes I shoot RAW and JPEG, 
um, lately I've been just shooting raw and so that if, it, if it's a raw file, it'll always o open that up into camera raw. Oh, right. No, the, uh, that's, that's a great question because uh, Chirag was asking about in, in Lightroom, when you, when you download pictures, it does it chronologically. So if you use two cameras, uh, the, the files will overlap because if you're shooting at uh, using both cameras uh, within, this, within the same hour or something like that, it'll, the, the files will overlap. No, in, in, uh, in Photo Mechanic, um, it, if you, you could, each time you put a disk in your, um, uh, the, the, the camera memory card into your computer, it'll, uh, this is the, it's called ingest. They come up with all these great terms for the, <laughs> for how you download the thing. So it'll, it'll ingest the, the files and the way I have it set up, it'll use, it'll do a folder sequence so that when, when I'll put in a, a memory card, uh, the, next, the, the folder that it's going to choose is number 290, so it'll ingest that, uh, it'll, the, the operation will end, I'll eject the disk, I'll put in a second disk if I'm using two cameras, and uh, when, when this window opens back up, the folder sequence number will be 291, and so it'll put it into a completely separate folder on the same hard drive, um, and then it'll put everything, JPEGs, RAWs, everything into that, into that one folder. You can actually uh, put a couple different preferences in it, how, however way you want it, uh, but it, it, it just does the folders. You could you could do the folders in a numerical sequence, and so that that keeps them um, keeps everything separate, which is which is nice. Um, Isn't there a Yeah, the uh, I know Lightroom can be used as sort of an overall program in terms of uh, a browsing, selecting something, and then doing some sort of processing. Uh, uh, this is just a workflow again that that, that I that I've gotten used to, and um, this and Photo Mechanic will take care of that problem of of uh, two two cameras that you're shooting um, simultaneously because then because it, it separates each disk onto onto separate folders, which is which is really nice.